Hey there, I'm, I'm back, uh, sort of. For my other update videos, I, I went off from a script because I thought it would help me be a lot more concise and not waste as much time, but at the same time, it's a lot less personal, and I, I wanted to be a bit more personal with you guys because you deserve it. You were here, even if there are a few of you. There's, there's 18 subscribers right now. Even if you are what most would consider a small number, I still believe that you deserve my full sincerity in this particular case. I, I'd like to take some time and explain where I was when I started the channel and was uploading it to it, um, and then what happened in the two year gap and where you can find me now. So when I started uploading the channel, I was in college. I was living with my dad and going to Ohio University because he was working there, and so I got enough of a tuition break that I could go to college without incurring debt. And college was just something that was always expected of me growing up. It was just where my life was heading. It's, it's every teacher, every adult, mentor, my parents, everyone was just like, you will go to college, you will get good grades, you will study, you will dedicate your entire existence to getting those good grades because you will go to college. It was just it was just a given so i didn't think about doing anything else with my life and i wish i had i wish i had not gone to college because even though i did not incur debt i was very blessed in that regard um it was still a massive waste of time and i i deeply regret it um but it did allow me some freedom some spare time with which i invested in my hobby of YouTube. Doing YouTube had always been something I'd wanted to do um, since as far back as middle school when I was watching Tobuscus and Smosh. Uh, I was like, hey, like back in middle school, I, I, Tobuscus and myself were incredibly similar to the point where when I discovered him, I, I was in shock. It was like I was seeing a doppelganger. I was like, well, this guy's just like me. That's so weird. I bet I could do that. So then what stopped me from doing that? Well, what stopped me from doing that was the the way that I am a perfectionist and the way that I treated the hobby like a hobby instead of like an actual goal. Because back back then, I lived exclusively for other people. I was very conditioned to get good grades and live for my parents and all that stuff. Like that, that was who I was. I, I wasn't Derek. I, I wasn't, I didn't have an identity. I was just someone who lived for others. And since then I have gotten an identity and I've gotten a better grasp of who I am and I, I now have a actual personality that I can that I can communicate to you with, and hopefully that comes across. Um, who, who knows, though? Who knows? Right, I was living for others, and I wasn't living for myself. It didn't matter that I wanted to do this. I needed to sacrifice what I wanted to do so that I could do what others wanted me to do. And that's the main reason why I, I forced myself to only see things as a hobby and not as something serious to pursue. Um, along that time, uh, my dad moved to Kansas, uh, and started going, uh, working at Kansas State University, so then I started going to Kansas State University. Uh, I, I actually really liked Ohio University. Uh, I, I can recommend it, I liked its atmosphere, the, the teachers were great, that I encountered anyways. Uh, the students I encountered were great, I had some friends. We moved to Kansas. I'm sure that Kansas State University can be great for some people, but I had a lot of bad experiences at it, and I personally can't recommend it. Um, some of those bad experiences did trickle down and affect my grades. On top of that, I also picked up a part-time job, um, and that also affected my grades a little bit, and my general enthusiasm from school also affected my grades, and I didn't outright fail anything. But there was a drop. Instead of being like an A, B student, I dropped to like a C, maybe D student. I forget if I actually hit D or not. If not, I got close. Um, and the college noticed that and they sent me a letter saying, hey, we noticed your grades dropped and we want 
we want you to continue here, but we see that you picked up a part-time job. We're wondering if that's affecting it and if money is a worry. So you should take a year off from college, go work a full-time job, stockpile that money, and then come back here and try it again. Um, and I thought, you know what? That sounds swell. I am disillusioned with this grand college experience, and I could certainly use some time to garner copious amounts of money and uh, situate myself nicely. Um, and so I started applying for jobs. And that went on for a very long time. I didn't get a job for a very long time. I didn't get a job in Kansas, period. I don't know exactly why. Um, my theory is that while they, while they all said that they were an entry-level job, they tend to want experience before they'll hire you. Even if they don't say that they need you to have any experience, even if they say entry level, all jobs, I firmly believe, prioritize experience. And I believe that all the jobs I applied for, because they weren't truly entry level jobs. But I mean by truly entry level jobs, I mean like McDonald's, like flipping burgers. No one, no one's gonna fight over that job. Like that's, that's something that you're guaranteed, no matter how much experience you have. But because I was like, you know what? I'm too stubborn to go work in a grocery store. I'm too stubborn to go work at McDonald's. I want something decent as my first job because I, I was a fool and didn't, didn't realize that I should have just accepted the burger flipping job so that I could do something instead of just sit there and be sad and depressed. Well, how I dealt with that depression of, of applying to multiple jobs daily and getting nothing for months upon months upon months was I needed to find friends. And I didn't have real life friends. Um, for, for much of my life, I had been uprooted and uh, brought to a new school. Um, college, this wasn't a new pattern. This had stuff, been stuff that was going on in elementary school and middle school and in high school. Um, so I, I didn't have any long-lasting friends. I was used to just making friends wherever I go, and I was pretty good at it, too. I still think I'm pretty good at it. Um, but in Kansas, I hadn't made solid friends. Um, previously in Ohio, and a little bit in Kansas, though, I had experimented with D&D, &D, and I couldn't find a DM that was solid that was in Kansas. So I decided, what if I be the DM? Um, and so I did. I started running D&D &D online through Discord for some friends that I met on Discord, and uh, those campaigns were fantastic, and uh, those friends really saved me. They really helped me through some very dark times, um, and I, I adore them. Um, and then eventually my dad said, what if you go to uh, Stanley, Idaho. Stanley, Idaho is a tiny, tiny, tiny mountain town um, in the Sawtooth Mountains in Idaho. And my grandparents have a cabin near Stanley. In the past, my little brother and I had gone up there to vacation with my grandparents. And my little brother is being sent up there to vacation there and during his summer vacation because he was still in I think it was high school and um, he was also getting a job up there to work through the summer and my dad he's he's like the eclipse is gonna be happening tourism is gonna be going crazy they're gonna be desperate for workers they'll hire you and so he's like why don't you go up there it'll get you out of the house it'll get you out of this stuffy atmosphere go go get work in Stanley and I thought you know what sounds swell so I, I went to Stanley I uh, went and applied uh, for the front desk position um, and I got it the very same day because it's a small town that's just how it works they were desperate for people to work and uh, I was there at the right time at the right place I got the job um, I stayed there for two years it feels like three years but it's not three years it's just three summers that's why it feels like three years because the summers there <laughs> the summers there are very very stressful don't get me wrong the job had a lot of ups to it it was very cushy in that I got to largely um, sit near or behind a computer and yes I was expected to phone calls and talk to people and check them in and stand up and be respective and uh, respectful, pardon me, and carry myself well and be amicable and hospitable and there was a lot of, there was, it, it was still a very hard job. But at the same time, in those, in those glimmering moments 
of downtime in between the, the chaos, I was then allowed to do whatever I wanted, so long as it was on the computer. I couldn't bring a book, because that was something that they could see. Um, I couldn't bring electronic devices like a cell phone, because that was, again, something I could see. But, funny enough, they were okay with you doing whatever you wanted on the computer, because the monitor is facing towards you, not towards the guests, so that's something that the guests can't see. So I was able to research um, a lot of things that interested me. I was able to type away to my friends on Discord, which I, I greatly needed them because once it switched from um, summer vacation mode to living in Stanley full time, it became very, very oppressive and lonely. Um, there's not a whole lot of people up there in Stanley. Um, most of the people already are married or already have their friends and cliques and whatnot, and I... It's not that I was outright rejected by any community, but I couldn't find a place. I couldn't find solid friends in real life, um, other than my co-workers, which a lot of my co-workers were great, and I do genuinely love them, but they, they're still co-workers and not, uh, that kind of more deep... Um, relationship that I, I'd be looking for um, and so my internet friends became my friends they were my lifeline they were what tied me to society so to speak they, they were what tied me to sanity to being able to talk with people to being able to vent to being able to share joy to be able to share suffering um, and they really helped me through um, the, all the isolation and loneliness I was dealing with up there. Um, so like, yes, the job had its perks because during the summer, not the summer, during the winter, there's not a whole lot going on. So it just became like 90% computer time, which was great because then it was, it was like I was being paid to just sit there and do whatever I wanted on the computer. Um, but then during the summer, it was like next to no computer time and things got very stressful and dark. And it being a tourist trap town, it attracts a lot of people who have a lot of money. And what people with a lot of money on vacation tend to think is that they are on vacation. They are the customer. They won't be seen again by the, by, by the, the locals here. Their reputation will remain untarnished no matter what they do. So they believe that they are entitled to make a stink about everything. They believe they're entitled to blackmail you if they want to. They believe that they are entitled to try and strong arm you into free stuff. And if you say no, that doesn't go with our policies. They believe that they are allowed to try and get you fired by talking to your manager, even though your manager has your back. And you're like, in some cases, I'd actually ask them if they wanted to talk to the manager because then the manager saying no would be the final say and then they'd shut up, <laughs> ideally, uh, which, which did tend to happen. Happen. But they they were very they were very venomous people. That's not me saying that all people with money are assholes. There are certainly a lot of good people out there who are very wealthy, in my opinion. Um, but the majority of them coming up specifically to Stanley to vacation were very very mean and vindictive, bitter people that I I began to lose I guess faith in humanity, and I began I began to become filled with hate and bitterness myself. I, I began to hate them actively, and I began to hate my job, even though it had some very cushy allotments to it. All the all the bad of it began to add up, and it came, became to the point where I, I, I was thinking, it's not worth it. Um, and I began to come up with a escape plan. Um, when I moved to Stanley, Long, I don't remember exactly when before then, but, but long before then, I think shortly after the move to Kansas was when the YouTube channel went active, and I had planned on relaunching it then, and I believe I'd made a video asking you guys like what you guys are looking for, and there wasn't a whole lot of communication back, and I took that to mean that nobody cares, which helped me kill it, because it meant that I didn't have anyone relying on me, I didn't have anyone wanting content from me. I didn't have anyone that cared, um, was, was how my brain saw that. That might not have been the case. You might have cared very much, and you might have just not commented. 
because comments just aren't what works for you. Hey, that's fine. I've got a Discord now. Maybe that'll work for you. Anywho, um, the, the point is I, I then had an escape plan where I'm like, all right, I'm going to work this third summer and then I'm going to work through the winter because that winter is my just deserved portion of relaxation for the... The, yeah, all right, shitstorm um, of a summer that I had to put up with. Uh, it was very stressful, and I lost a lot of weight. Um, and uh, I did not like how I looked at the end of that summer. I, I did not, not exactly to that extreme, but I was not visually unlike a Holocaust survivor. And it... It, it frustrated me. Don't get me wrong. I've never been bulky or muscular. I've always been skinny But this was this was a new level of skinny that I was not comfortable with I've since been working out like don't get me wrong My arms aren't huge or anything like that, but you can see that there's actually some meat on them now. There's some definition there uh, Hopefully hopefully that's doing something um, So I'm doing a lot better now, so you don't have to worry about me health wise, but but at the end of that summer I was I was not at all healthy um, that summer actually being the, the previous summer we just got done with. Well, not just got done with, because now it's winter, but you, you, you get what I mean. Um, and uh, I had planned on staying there for the winter and just stockpiling money. I had a friend, um, Peter, uh, who I met through the internet, who was in desperate need of housing um, and a job. And I thought, well, wait a moment, all the seasonal help is moving out. The dorms are going to be empty. They got plenty of room at the dorms. I've already been talking to plenty of other people. Everyone around here is hiring and desperate for work. I should just get Peter to move up here. He can move into the dorms. He can work. Um, everything will be fine for him. And that's what I went out to do was try and get that happening. And I, I ran into some very weird roadblocks where they, they told me the exact opposite of what I knew to be false. Or, sorry, of what I knew to be true. What I'm getting at is they told me they don't have any housing left and they don't have any jobs, which I had talked to people. We had plenty of housing and we needed people desperately for jobs, which is, again, the exact opposite of what the owner was telling me. Um, and that... That, that kind of, I, I, I didn't know whether or not to be hurt that they were lying to me or to think that there was a grand conspiracy. There was a few other weird happenings in, in Stanley that had happened recently that made me think that there could be some grand conspiracy and there is a, I don't want to go into, into details, but there is certainly a lot of darkness in that place. And um, I think there definitely is something going on there. I don't know if what I stumbled into was just them trying to get me to leave because uh, they were tired of me, or if what I encountered was a part of that darkness. Who can say? Um, but uh, eventually, um, at first I was in a moment of panic where I'm like, well, well shoot. Peter's already on his way up here. He's taken the, the Greyhound buses and everything, and now suddenly I don't have anywhere to put him. What do I do? And I, I gave it some thought, and I, I thought, maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Maybe this is the kick in the pants I need to move out. Because if Peter can't come up here to Stanley where it's cheap and find a job and a and cheap uh, place to be so that he can support himself, Perhaps, if he and I move somewhere else, as roommates, we can find jobs, and as roommates, we'd be able to live fairly cheaply and inexpensively, and be able to support each other. Um, and so we went to Boise, and so I did not get my winter of respite after my, my third summer. No, I, I, I just went straight to Boise. Um, and there was a bit of a panic for a while. Uh, I, I had the, the trouble where I was stubborn and didn't apply for fast food jobs again. 
Um, because I'm like, no, I've, I have two years of experience at the front desk. I, I, I'm hospitable, and this is my niche, and I can talk to people. I could, I could go to a call center with all the phone experience I have. I'm a salesman. You know how many rooms I sold at that place? <laughs> I've sold many, countless, thousands. That's not even a joke. Probably close to a million by now. I am a fancy boy. Um, someone's gonna hire me, right? And, uh... And, uh, I, I did eventually get a very nice job at the USPS. It was a seasonal job, um, and it was just for, it, it, was, it was for a little bit more than just December, but it was effectively just for the month of December, um, and it paid very nice. It was $17.19 an hour, and it was full-time, and it was hard and grueling work, but it paid very nice, and I, I think that... I, I didn't entirely enjoy it because they they swapped me to, between a lot of different machines and a lot of different positions and so I had to effectively relive that first day of work experience where you know nothing and you're panicking and you're trying to do stuff and but like you don't have the luxury of taking it slow because they have a 24 hour clock. The mail doesn't stop. The mail does not stop at all. Everything is on a clock. You need to be moving at all times, you need to be working at all times, because if you're too slow, if you don't work hard enough, that affects everyone else throughout the day. Um, and so in that sense, it was a very stressful environment, where not only did I have to work under those types of conditions and warehouse slash factory type conditions, but I also had to relive that first day at work type experience multiple times. Um, Overall, if it were to become a more stable job, if I were to make regular, um, I think I'd enjoy working there. If, if they could stick me on one station or alternate me between two stations, uh, with the occasional third station, if, I, if like some emergency condition or holiday condition happens, fine, I'd be okay with that. But just so long as it gets stable, and so long as I have two days off that are stable. I did eventually get them to give me Sunday off, because the buses do not run on Sunday, so if they didn't give me Sunday off, I would have to walk two hours to work, and then work my eight hours of grueling work, and then walk two hours back home. <laughs> and that was just something I'm like, guys, I talked to you about this, where where you said that it'd be okay if I take Sunday off. That was something I watched you write down, and you've got me scheduled for Sunday. <laughs> I, I, the buses don't run on Sunday. I, I can't, I can't work on Sundays. And, and, uh, they were, they were nice enough to say, yeah, you're right. You did talk to us about that. We're sorry. Uh, you've got your Sundays off. And they, they worked around that. So, so kudos to them. Honestly, like my, my experience with USPS is very positive. Like, I'm not saying it's for everyone. It's certainly very stressful. It can certainly drive you crazy. Um, it's reputation of being harsh um is is well deserved but i personally liked it and i personally would work there again if i made regular um and now i'm in between jobs again uh and my little brother just moved in and i'm looking to relaunch the channel well not so much relaunch the channel so much as launch a new channel. I want to take stuff in a different direction. At first I was toying with the idea of just having the videos here and then just rebranding and changing everything and whatnot, but I think I think it'd be easier to just post this final, I guess, closing video on the Per Derek channel um, because I, I, I like the name. It's a very punny name. Um, my dad came up with it and I was very pleased with it and I, I used it, but at the same time, it doesn't really fit what I'm going to be doing going forward. Going forward, I'm going to be doing a lot more D&D stuff and some video game stuff and some voice acting stuff. The, that is what I see the channel being in the future. Less about Let's Plays and less about reviews and stuff like that. I guess, I guess there will still be some reviews. But the, the channel is definitely going in a different direction. It's, it's a lot less about um, the Let's Play aspect and much more about the shows that I'm capable of doing. And at the time, I have set myself as a goal of having two weekly shows and one weekly stream, and keep keep an eye on the Discord, which is definitely something that I can do because I'm always over there anyways. Um, that I've, uh, I've discovered that 
I have limits. I I have started working on many, 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 many projects, this YouTube channel being one of them, and they die out before completion all the time. And I, I, I tell myself, this is fine because I can take what I've learned from this experience or I can take this aspect of this project and put it in another project. Um, or I can just come back to it and finish it later whenever I hit one of those roadblocks. And even if the roadblock is like a big life thing, like moving between Ohio and Kansas, which was I think ultimately what led to killing this channel. Um, even, even if it's something that's out of my control, I, I still believe that I I'm capable of finishing projects. It's just a matter of me starting a project that can be finished, of me knowing my limits, knowing what I'm capable of, knowing to curb my ambition. Um, and that's that coupled with a few other things I've learned from, from running this channel um, is what I feel will help me succeed in the future. Um, beyond that, uh, Whereas I saw this channel as a hobby, I think I'm going to take the other one a bit more seriously. Um, and I know that that sounds bad, because it's like, well, you're, you're starting out, it, sh it should be a hobby, you shouldn't be expecting anything. And for some people, that's true, and if that's you, go for it. Um, but for me, if I'm going to stick with something long term, if I'm going to grow and improve and grow and improve it, along the way, if I'm going to partake in a long-term project, I need a long-term goal that I know is achievable. And so the long-term goal is make it as a YouTuber to stick with this next channel, this next project, and see it to completion. Uh, the entire point of being a YouTuber is that it's never complete because then it becomes a job and whatnot. So I guess the, the point at which I'm making about a thousand dollars a month off from it, that would effectively be the success of the goal because at that point in time, that's enough for me to pay rent and food. It'd be a very risky wage to live off from. So there's that to think about and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have enough money to put into an emergency fund. Uh, I wouldn't have enough money to buy insurance. If uh, any kind of emergency happened, I would effectively be screwed. Um, so it's not ideal and I probably shouldn't live off from $1,000 a month, but at that point in time, I have reached success. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of where I am. I'd. Uh, I'm, I'm launching a new channel, and uh, you are welcome to come and join me on that other end. Uh, I, I hold no animosity against you for not commenting um, way back when, causing me to think that no one cared. I, I assume that you do care. I assume that you didn't comment out of either laziness or because uh, you didn't care, but not out of spite. Certainly not out of spite. So you're welcome to join me at Discord or at the other channel or wherever you choose to partake of my content. Or perhaps this is just the end for us. Could just be the end for us. Um, another thing is uh, during while I was working at Stanley, and I think on the tail end of that college stuff as well. I started doing Twitch, again, just for fun, and I'm still doing Twitch to this day, so I also have a lot of experience over there. I mostly run and play D&D on Twitch every now and then, there's the occasional video game, and I'd, I'd like to try and get a little bit more consistent and a little bit more professional over there. That's one of those casual hobbies that will be hopefully uh, making the jump over there with YouTube to be, me bring it back up to like a professional level and actually going for it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so there's that aspect too. If uh, if you've grown apart from YouTube and interacting with me live through chat is, is more your alley, go with Twitch. Like uh, there's, there's a, there should be a bunch of links in the description. Um, this is it for this channel. This the, the links are there to make sure that if you care at all about me and my content, that you can find me. Um, that should do the trick. I'll, I'll see you on the other side. Uh, click those links, and I'll, I'll see you on the other side of one of them, or or I won't. And honestly, that's okay. Uh, this is a chapter of my life that I am closing, and um, maybe you are too. Uh, I'm opening up a new chapter. Perhaps you are too. 
Um, I wish you the best. You have a good night.